that's what Pastor said. I'm like, what else is on this? I know, I do. I'm sorry. What's that? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Good morning. Good morning. It is so good to have you all here this morning. Those who are in person here worshiping and those who are joining us on Facebook, I'm certainly glad to be with you as we gather to worship and praise our God on this Palm Sunday morning. Just a couple of uh, reminders, things going on. Uh, be mindful of our Holy Week services. Uh, those who signed up to be part of the meal in the upper room, that is Tuesday evening at 6, down in Fellowship Hall. Our Monday Thursday service is at 7 p.m. And on Friday, there are two uh, prayer opportunities. One is at noon at the Wesleyville Baptist Church. That is a community service. And for those who are interested, there's a crosswalk involved. And that means walking in the community, um, doing a version of the Stations of the Cross along the way, um, and then ending back, that, back at the uh, Westerville Baptist Church. That's at noon. And then Friday evening at 7 p.m., we will have our Good Friday prayer service. And you're welcome to be part of all of those or any of those. Our Wednesday night Bible studies will start up again on April 20th. And we are finally making our way to the second letter of Peter. <laughs> and um, this we will end this Bible study the last Wednesday of May. So I think that's May 25th. Uh, so it's a six-week study uh, in person or on Zoom, either way, okay? And uh, you're welcome to be part of that. And now let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. He comes with joy and hope. Hosanna. Hosanna. Glory to God in the highest heaven. Please raise your palms.
Not those palms, Cindy. These palms. <laughs> get, could, 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 our, could somebody get them palm pl prawns, please? <laughs> I thought that was funny. She went like this. Raise your palms. <laughs> we'll pause. There you go. You are the turkey. Okay, let us pray. <laughs> Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed the Son of David. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. We praise and thank you, O God, for the great acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was acclaimed Son of David and King of Kings by those who scattered their garments and branches of palm in his path. We ask that you bless these branches and those who bear them and grant that we may ever hail him as our Lord and King and follow him with perfect confidence through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So we decided to switch things up a little bit for Palm Sunday, and we have a new song that was requested. Um, for us today to sing. So it's called Your Holy Prince of Peace. And I'd like to just go over it real quick, just parts of it anyway. And then if nothing else, we'll be pros at the verse, or I'm sorry, yeah, at the verse. And then we'll make our way through the chorus. But the way this goes, it's separated into men and women. So I'm going to be representing the men, you're welcome. And Cindy will be representing the women. So it starts out like this and it goes, you are holy, you are mighty, you are mighty, you are worthy, worthy of praise. I will follow, I will listen. to this split chorus sung together and I totally understand if you're like what are you talking about it's too early but I mean if you feel comfortable you can pick a part we'll just go through the first part and then we'll actually do the song together and, and we'll let the chips fall where they may but it, go <laughs> it goes so all of my days I will sing to and worship the King who is worthy. I will love and adore Him. I will bow down before Him. I will sing to and worship the King who is worthy. I will I will live my life for you. So, magically, what was that? Oh, okay. So, magically, you're going to pick a part. We're not going to discriminate against whether you decide to sing with the men or the women. You choose, because obviously I'm singing with the boys. So, <laughs> thank you. Um, so, let's try it, and um, if we like it, we'll do it again another Sunday, and we'll be professional. It'll be great. All right. Yes. Refrain, the men are singing one part, the women are singing a different part in case I. Okay. 
It's almost like two conversations happening at the same time. JJ uh, told me that the other day with another song when we did Abba Father, and I'm like, I like that. Two conversations happening at the same time. And they're different. And they're different. It's like men and women talking at each other all the time. I just said that. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Now that we've come to the comedy show. It is. This is fun. Okay. Here we go. We're going to start it and just jump in and as you feel comfortable and confident. And if you don't feel either one of those, just jump in whenever you feel happy, when the spirit moves. You are holy. You are holy. You are mighty. You are mighty. You are worthy. was pretty awesome so good job everybody thank you let us pray hosanna king of all you reign over all reign in our lives triumph over evil and teach us to follow in your footsteps amen
now the festival of unleavened bread, which is called the Passover, was near. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to put Jesus to death, for they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered into Judas, called Iscariot, who was one of the twelve. He went away and conferred with the chief priests and officers of the temple police about how he might betray Jesus to them. They were greatly pleased and agreed to give him money. So he consented and began to look for an opportunity to betray him to them when no crowd was present. Then came the day of the unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover meal for us, that we may eat it. They asked him, Listen, when you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house he enters and say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks you, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs already furnished. Make preparations for us there. So they went and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When the hour came, he took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined. But woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to ask one another which one of them it could be who would do this. A dispute also arose among them as to which one of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But he said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them. And those in authority over them are called benefactors, but not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you, just as my Father has conferred on me, a kingdom, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on, the, on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, listen! Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail. And you, when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. And Peter said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you have denied three times that you know me. He said to them, when I sent you out without a purse, bag, or sandals, did you lack anything? They said, No, not a thing. He said to them, But now, the one who has a purse must take it, and likewise a bag. And the one who has no sword must sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you, this scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was counted among the lawless. And indeed, what is written about me is being fulfilled. They said, 
He replied, It is enough. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed. Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked. Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, No more of this! And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police, and the elders who had come for him, Have you come out with swords and clubs, as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple... You did not lay hands on me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, A little later, someone else on seeing him said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Then about an hour later, still another kept insisting. Surely this man also was with him, but Jesus said, But Peter said, At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him. They kept heaping many other insults on him. When day came, the assembly of the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, gathered together, and they brought him to their council. They said, He replied, If I tell you, you will not believe, and if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. All of them asked, Are you then the Son of God? Jesus said to them, You say that I am. Then they said, Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, Then Pilate asked him. He answered, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, But they were insistent and said, When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been wanting to see him for a long time, because he had heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod, with his soldiers, treated him with contempt and mocked him. 
And then they put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people, and said to them, Then they all shouted out together. This was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate wanted to release Jesus, address them again, but they kept shouting. A third time Pilate said to them. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over as they wished. As they led him away, they seized the man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the word when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others, also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at him, saying, The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, Destroy the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light failed and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered there for the spec this spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. Now there was a good and righteous man named Joseph, who, though a member of a council, had not agreed to their plan and action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea, and he was waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in a linen cloth, and laid it in the rock-hewn tomb where no one had ever been laid. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed, and they saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath, they rested according to the commandment. 
the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this time, we will take a few minutes of silent reflection time to consider what we've just heard about the passion and death of Jesus as we prepare ourselves for the event that we will later this week celebrate leading up to Easter. Were the word at the beginning, one with God the Lord most high, in glory in creation, now revealed in you are Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a wonderful name. 
Celebrating our baptism, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. The Lord's peace be with you. For I know that you have peace. So much peace.
Jesus Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, the ransom from heaven. Give us a heart that gladly gives. Even as you gave your all for us, so may we give our all to you. May we not give out of our abundance, but out of our poverty. Amen. As we offer our prayers, God will remember us, our dreams, our hopes, as well as our failings, and we will and and will restore us to new life. Let us join our voices together, asking for forgiveness. God of betrayers, have mercy on us. We forget those who are around us as if they had died, rather than caring for them. We argue about who is the wisest, the strongest, greatest, and never notice those who serve with humility and grace. Yet we pray that you would remember us and pour out mercy on us. May we commit our hearts into yours, so we may learn how to love as deeply as you. May we commit our hands into yours, so we may be taught how to serve others with joy. May we commit our spirits into yours, so we may be as trusting as Jesus, and believe the promises you made so long ago. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. God journeys with us and teaches us how to live in love and forgives our sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In the night in which Jesus was betrayed, our Lord took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me.
again after supper. Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Here is food and drink for the journey. Take and be filled. The body of Christ is given for you by the blood of Christ shed for you by the
us pray. Blessed Jesus, in this rich meal of grace, you have fed us with your body, the bread of life. Now send us forth to bear your life-giving hope to a world in need through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church, called to follow Jesus in the way of the cross. Make us unflinching servants of the gospel. Deliver us from hardship as we confront the forces of injustice and practice radical compassion. Merciful God, for those in positions of authority, called to lead with integrity and compassion. Supply them with courage and vulnerability when challenged with new ideas. Deliver them from fear that limits imagination and impeded justice. Merciful God, for Christians around the world, preparing this week to journey with Jesus to the cross. Reveal to us once again the earth-shaking power of humble service, unmerited forgiveness, and sacrificial love. Lead us all from death to life. Merciful God, healing God. During this lingering pandemic, we pray that the Spirit will guide us to show patience, exercise flexibility, and care for our neighbor's physical and spiritual well-being. Inspire in us a spirit of sacrificial love and concern for one another, especially the most vulnerable. Merciful God, we confess, repent, and reject the times when we as a church and as individuals have been silent in the face of racial injustice. Heal the hearts of those affected by racism in our community and worldwide. Merciful God, heal those who are in distress and give patience to those who are waiting for answers, especially Bishop Michael Lozano, those on our prayer list, and those we now name in your presence. Give compassionate hearts to those who accompany loved ones through illness and uncertainty. Merciful God, we praise you for the saints who have inherited the fullness of your kingdom, especially Marilyn Ulrich, Ole Beck, Dorothy Steinhoff, Ken Furman, Winnie Ott, and Agnes Pratt. Sustain us in faith by the promise of resurrection. Merciful God, we pray for peace in the world, especially in Ukraine, and for the safety of all military personnel, especially those who have congregational ties. Merciful God, receive our prayers. O oh God, accept the prayers we bring on behalf of a world in need for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. We are children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for the journey. May Almighty God, Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier bless us today and always. Amen.
Thanks, Savannah. Great job. Didn't have to remind you of all the things. You remembered everything today. Awesome.